Thanks, mate. Cheers, boys. Thanks, good on you. Thanks, boys. Good on you, mate. Uh, it's been a hard fought season, honestly. Uh, we've pushed through. We've pushed through. We tried to push through. So we got there in the end. You know what I mean? It's been it's been one of those years where it was on and off. We turned it off for a few weeks, and then obviously we've come back through with it. And credit to Roxbury Park today, they've done well. But we've got the chocolates in the end, which was great great for all the boys. Anyway, you were part of the team that won the flag a couple of years ago, but didn't no, go back. No, up? I wasn't. No, no, I broke my arm that year, so I missed out. I, I broke my arm about round nine or ten, and I actually sat on the sidelines with a sling and watched it. So this was pretty much redemption for me, honestly. And, and it's just great. It's actually great to have this win today. So it's been good. Go up on the stage, Dave said that it's, uh, they've righted the wrong of getting relegated a couple of years ago. So, uh, how yeah. important is it that uh, you guys made amends for that? Oh, you know, well, Batsy and all the coaching staff, they've uh, they've tried really hard over the last obviously two years since they've been here, and um, all credit to them because if it wasn't with them, we wouldn't we wouldn't be here today. You know what I mean? So, all the best to Batsy and all that because, mate, if it wasn't for them, as I said, we wouldn't be here. So. It was a credit to them and a credit to obviously all the boys all through the lines, forwards, midfield, defence. We just stuck stuck thick and it obviously worked our way. So And challenged today, but uh, able to kick away in the last quarter. What do you put it down to? Oh, I, I think it was just more our fitness. We've we've strived on it through the whole year about fitness and all that. And, um, you know, Batsy's been punished us at, at training and all that talent. So we've got to keep pushing through, keep pushing through. And it obviously showed today that we actually got the job done because they ran out of legs and we just kept on going. So well, it was good. Dean Roberts is with us. Dean, congratulations on such a terrific victory this afternoon. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Well, thanks, guys. Um, yeah, it was really hard work, but um, came away with the chocolates, which is very nice. Yeah. They applied some pressure on in that third quarter. How were the team able to reply so well in the final quarter? I think it's been a good um, ability of ours all year just to sort of step up and absorb the pressure and absorb the pressure and then and really counter-attack when it's our turn to go. So um, I think we did that really well, which is a credit to us because we've been doing well all year. And uh, as far as redemption, Dave mentioned it up on stage for relegation a couple of years ago. How has the journey through Division 2 affected you? Uh, well, coming from playing, uh, playing here since I was eight years old, I saw the, the good times in A grade and um, as far as I'm concern, concerned, and a lot of the boys, we're, we're an A grade club and we're working hard to get back there. So it's a first step and um, hopefully within, you know, the next couple of years we're back up where we belong. After Hillside blew the league away last season, um, how important was it that once it was clear that you know it was a more even comp this year that you guys actually went on with the job? Yeah, well that's it. Um, early on in the year, um, uh, Bulldog, the president, and myself and a few others sat down and we said, it's now, it's now or never, and this is our year and it's got to, we've got to make it ours. So, uh, barring a couple of losses along the way, it's been, it's been a pretty smooth ride. And, and, uh, well, hard work starts again now to get back into A-grade. And uh, as far as the commitment of the group, uh, Dave mentioned the number of homegrowns. I mean, what do you need to survive in Div 1 next year? Look, um, as, as we said, um, the, uh, the base of the group, the core of the group is the homegrowns, and, and that's where you build your depth, and from there you just top up. So I'm not, you know, don't know much about the recruiting side of things, but, um, you know, a few, few top-ups would be nice, but that core group, just got to get them to stick around. Congratulations on winning player of the day and such a memorable victory for the East Kiel Football Club. Yeah, cheers boys. Um, yeah, not a bad day to get it. Uh, it's a good win. A good half four win in the end. Uh, boys stuck it out. We were, we were going to win the first, the second or the third. It was going to be grinded. We just grinded it and that was good. How important has the uh, strength and unity amongst the group been throughout this season? Was there a particular message or team meeting at the beginning of the season to say this year is going to be our year? Oh, it was really never said um, out loud, but internally we all knew this was this was only one there's only one option this year, and this was to win it, to get back up to where we belong, this footy, footy club. Uh, and that was it. We just knew that's what we had to do. Oh, um, the midfield battle today, it seems like a real match of insides versus outside and they got the first three goals with a lot of run and a lot of carry, but you guys ended up dominating the centre square. What Did it rattle you though that they got the jump? Um, a little bit, a little bit. We uh, They got the jump early. We were, we've been hoping for rain actually because they're, they're a quick side and like, like you said, we're in and under and the last couple of times we played them was a big ground, dry weather. Um, that didn't suit us, but we, like, like I said, we grinded out. We knew it was going to take all the way to the end. And uh, just like enough we got in the end, which is good. And it, it is two flags in three years, but how much more does promotion mean along with oh, the Premiership? Oh, it, it doesn't compare. I, I, was, um, I was here two years ago, and I was, it just it doesn't compare. It doesn't compare. Um, yeah. It just... To go up a division, that's all, that's all we wanted to do. 
two years ago was just we really were playing for nothing in the end. We got the one thing we didn't do was was to get relegated, and we did. So it was really, yeah, it was really a bit of a nothing thing. But this year it was unbelievable, unbelievable. Tell me about the first quarter when uh, they got the jump on you. But we spoke about we spoke before the game uh, regarding, you know, if they jump us, we knew they needed to get momentum. They wanted to get up and about early because you know we we beat them, ended up beating them by eight goals last time. Um, we spoke about composure and not to panic. Um, that maybe our senior boys needed to step up if that happens. And I um, mean, look, we, we spoke about if we're five goals down, we still believe we believe that we could win this game. So look, it wasn't a situation where we thought, oh, we just thought, you know, geez, that's probably a bit easier. They got they got the three in about seven minutes, I think. So, but look, in the end, our, exactly what happened. Our senior boys stood up. We got a couple back, and you know, we're five points down at quarter time. And you know, at that stage, we felt pretty good. What about the, the second quarter? You stretched the margin. They got it back to a point at half time. So, what was the nature of your half time talk? Oh, look, we spoke about that when we did get it to 14 points up. That maybe we had a couple of opportunities that we let slip. I thought we were struggling on our overlap. We we wouldn't lower the eyes. We just kept kicking long, and we our game style normally uh, revolves around actually spotting up targets and and working that way. And I just felt we missed some really good targets, so we had opportunities. And then we probably gave away some dumb free kicks at stages. And look, at half time, we said, you know, we're in front. So at the end of the day, we have to win a half of football and we win this thing. Third quarter, very much an arm wrestle, one goal each way. Um, did you did you ever feel as though Roxburgh Park were building a bit of momentum? It just seemed like they were the ones that could have benefited a bit more from a, a team lifting goal, whereas you guys were very much sort of playing with the upper hand but couldn't actually put it on the scoreboard. Oh, well, look, I. I felt that, yeah, look, in that third, because uh, that, that was a point, I felt like we had sort of control without actually having full control. And there was no doubt that you had this belief if they got another couple, then they're young players. And we know when they played us at their ground that they just start running and they're hard to stop. So, look, credit to our blokes. We were very professional the way we went about it. And, and I, I think they had an inner belief that if we could just grind away long enough, then hopefully we'll eventually break them. And, you know, and it, it took a long time, but, yeah, last quarter, and it was centre square control, it was your rucks and your inside guys that, that did it and you know, your second rucks won the, the best of field and, and you suggested yourself that Mondio was probably the medalist. I mean, what does that say about the way you've set up the team to basically play finals footy and, and be ready for pressure situations? Well, Robbie's actually our number one. He's, Rob, in, he's, yeah, he's number the one. number one. He's uh, Mondi, Mondi plays, he can play ruck and he can go forward, whereas Robbie, if he goes forward, he'll only sit in the square. So we're always probably in the ruck contest themselves. Mondi moves around the ground better, but for complete tap, yeah, Robbie, I reckon second to no one probably. And look, in that last quarter, he rucked for 25 minutes in the last quarter just because he started dominating. And I felt every time he was in the ruck, we had good control. Mondi and Douse had a good contest. Mondi was very useful to us around the ground. So, you know, look, it was when they when they asked about best players, I think it was one of those games where we didn't have anyone who really stood out. I, I felt that we just had uh, a really good balance a, across the ground, who people who bobbed up when required. And then in the last quarter, yeah, they all, all had a say. And you said on the stage that uh, you've righted the wrong. I guess uh, relegation uh, happened for seven teams at once. Um, you guys were the, the highest of them, and, and East Keylor won that premiership, which was, uh, Mark Caruso actually said, this is totally different feeling, even though it's two flags in three years. So I guess what's the... Coaches always think about next year first before anyone else, while everyone else is still celebrating. So, what are your thoughts, and, and why did you say that up on the on the stage? Look, there's no doubt. I mean, I, I wasn't here when they got relegated, and um, you know, I played in a side many many years ago that got relegated, and there's just that stigma that you're going down another division. Unfortunately, it is what it is. That's the way life is, and and it's always everyone feels that the longer you're down there, then the harder it is to attract players to your club or attract juniors to your club. So, there was a big belief we had to try to get out of there, but we didn't do it by spending money. We lost uh, two thirds of the side when I first took over. So we played a lot of kids and, and we, we've been building. We've been building and, and I mean, look, no offence to the league or any league that does it, but yeah, it wouldn't feel like a flag when they won two years ago because you got relegated and so would you rather be the team that won the flag in Division 2 or the team that finished 8th in Division 1? Everyone would say we'd rather be that team that finished 8th because we survived. That's why it doesn't feel that way. On the day it probably was special but outside of that they sit, sit back down and they say we came ninth. This one's meaningful because we got promoted. So, and, and again, that's no disrespect to any league because of what needs to happen to make, when you do the relegation, to make it actually useful, to make it have some purpose. And I understand that totally. But when a flag went up last year, at the start of last year, 
I can tell you right now that every player on our side looked at that flag and that was just a reminder of relegation. And you also mentioned your uh, assistant coaches and your, your support that you've had from the president and the committee. Um, if, I, I tried to record it as best I could, but if you could just reiterate some of the people that have been crucial behind the scenes. Well, look, I've got a coaching staff group. They're all mates. Um, Wayne Davis, Warwick Lucas, Barry Neville, who coaches at twos, and uh, with Wayne and, and, and Warwick, you know, we've been together. We came all together. We only did it because we were together. Um, it was like if one of us do it, we're all in or no, no one's in. So, you know, had another mate who unfortunately couldn't do it this year, uh, Cameron Mallinger, another mate who was our runner last year. So it's just with my coaching group, it's more than just the staff. We're, 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 we're real close, and they're probably co-coaches. With the committee themselves, look, Bulldog came on board, Jeff Nicol, as president last year. And, you know, probably the, the club, you know, the club, every club goes through its up, ups and downs, and it's probably going through, unfortunately, a bit of a downer. And he come on board and gave, gave Wignall, who coached under 18s in the flag last year, he's our secretary, and, and uh, Watto, he's our vice president. Um, they just do a power of work on and off the field. I mean, they're always trying to raise more money. And, and that's just so we can better the club in general. Our kids are going pretty well. We've got good kids coming through. So it, to them, it means a lot. I mean, this is our first flag, our first official flag in 20 years. That's the way they look at it. They don't look at the other one. Um, so now we're back in Division 1 where we were, you know, three years ago, whatever it is. Um, and we believe that with the young group we've got, because there's only five blokes over the age of 25 in our side, uh, we've got 15 guys who are homegrown in that side. That's not including the young kids who are in the resis and not including that we get another six 18s up from this year. So if we can recruit on top of that, yeah, we believe that we can compete and compete really well in the next division.